Hello, my name is Kirsty. Welcome to Kirsty Nits and Sews. I have a lot to share with you. After last week when I spoke a bit about casting on all the things, I'd been sick and I was just like, I wanted to start all these things. One of my friends commented that it feels good to see me with lots of whips again. And so I'm here to say, Rosie, you're going to love this. <laughs> it's been nuts. Not in a like overwhelming kind of way, which is what the case would have been if I'd done this six months ago, say. Um, but where I'm at at the moment, having lots of things on the go is just making me so happy. Um, I am working on things. There's one thing that I didn't even bring to show you because I haven't really touched that. But in general, I'm working on things and I'm really enjoying everything. And I'm enjoying having all the different things to work on in different times of my life. Because my life at the moment is not monochrome. Can I say that? My life at the moment isn't the same thing every day. Or if it is the same thing every day, I need some variety in that. Um, anyway, so lots of things to show you that I've either started or even started and finished since the last episode. So welcome. I hope you're here for it. If you don't already, grab a cup or something to drink. Um, I have Melbourne breakfast tea from T2 in Australia today in my beautiful um, mug that my Polish language teacher gave me because poppies are typical Polish, as she would say. Um, yeah. Get comfortable, grab a seat, grab your laundry, whatever it is we're doing today, and let's get started. I will just mention, everything that I talk about that is knitting or crocheting, I have project pages for on Ravelry. They're linked below. So you can go there, find out all the information. Um, it has yarn linked. It has. I will have shops directly linked below if there's like an indie dyer or something that I have used their yarn. Um, yeah, so <laughs> let's get started. I have, I don't even know if I counted, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> nine finished objects. And of those nine, one... Of those nine, I think only two were started last time. Only two. Yeah. All right. Like I said, <laughs> it's been crazy. Um, mostly in a good way. Oh, what I'm wearing. I should mention this, although we'll come back to it at the end as well. This is my habitation throat that I knit. Um, about a year ago, I was in hospital for some surgery, and this was my hospital knit that I finished while I was still recovering from that surgery. And I love it. My son tried to steal it the other day for his bed, and I told him no. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll let him have it, but at the moment, I like it here, and I don't tend to sit up here in it at the moment. Occasionally I do, but there is an egg chair outside over there, and so if I'm knitting there, excuse me, as it's getting cold out from knitting there, this is the blanket that I'm going to use for that. Um, what I'm wearing and what I have draped over the chair here are my Stephen West Mystery Knit Alongs, M Kells. Um, I have done three. The third one is currently in a box on its way from Australia to Poland. I live in Poland. I'm from Australia. We have stuff on the way in some boxes. Um, so that's where my third one is, but I am wearing the twists and turns one because I'm wearing long sleeves and it's actually not that cold today. I just was cold this morning and haven't been bothered to change. And this one is knit in 50-50 silk merino, so it's not as warm. Um, I actually don't wear this one very often. You can see it's not very deep. Not, it's more of a more useful as a scarf than a shawl, but because I live in Poland and it gets really cold, I actually just don't wear scarves that aren't warm often. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, so this is the twists and turns. I did a 50-50 silk from Miss Nitsky, uh, who is a Polish designer. And yeah, the greys were my main colours. The pop of colour was the teal. I kind of wish I'd done that different. I really like the teal and I probably would have preferred it if this was the main and the light grey was the pop or something. It is what it is. 
Um, and it is beautiful, beautiful yarn. I'd actually love to make some summer tops out of this yarn or some tops out of this yarn, um, which I may just do because that's kind of where I'm at. I don't have any more of it. I have leftovers from this. I don't think I have much of the teal left, but I have leftovers of the, the greys. Um, I would have thought I would have some teal. I don't know where it is. I haven't seen it for a long time. Anyway, I have some leftovers of the greys, and so I, but not enough for a top. I do have some of her yarn, which is a bamberino, so bamboo merino, um, but I also don't have enough for a top. I'd need to buy another skein of one of them to have enough for a top. So, anyway, ideas are percolating. Um, so twists and turns, this was two years ago. This was the 2022? MCAL, um, and the 2020 was Geography. This was my first one that I ever did. I love this one. I wear this one so much. This is knit in Holst Garn Super Soft, which is, I'm pretty sure 100% merino, and it's non-super wash. I want to say it's non-super wash. Don't quote me on that. Um, and I picked the colors myself. I love this. It was a delight to knit. It is a good size. My one complaint is that I did the I-Quad bind off too tight, and so there's a lot more stretch in the yarn than there is in the bind off. Um, yeah. Other than that, I love it. I still wear it a lot, and it is so warm. Um, it's very warm, and so I wear it a lot in winter when it's snowing. This wrapped around my neck is delightful. Anyway, so that's Shawlography. That was the 2021 shawl, and I knit that in like the month after I moved to Poland. I just got here and so that's sentimental. It was a way for me to connect to my sister. This one is when we went away from just me and my sister and we had some friends joining in. Hi guys, if you're watching. Um, and then the next one, which was last year's, I'm gonna forget the name, Geogradient. Um, I knit that while it was back in Australia for a few months. Um, anyway. History for if, you, if you're new here. Hi, if you're new here. Um, yeah, so all really fun. And yes, all of me wearing all of this, I am doing it again this year because I just enjoy the mystery. I enjoy learning. I have learned new techniques in every one of them. I've been knitting, I've been knitting for years. I've been knitting a lot for the last five years or so. And every time I do it, I learn. There are just techniques and ways of thinking that Stephen West has that I, I do not have. Um, and so I love it. And I did even the other day take up my yarn for it. So here are my colors for this year. Um, it is called Go Go Dynamo. I'm really hoping for some more kind of shape color at play like you get in this, even though it's only two colors. But I don't know, because whatever it is, he surprises me. And I will just say this again. If you've been here for a while, you know this. I hope it is a deep one. This is not deep enough for my liking. But again, I'm here for the ride. Whatever he does, I will tell you about it. I'll keep you updated as I go, but I'm here for it. Okay, I haven't even shown you anything that I finished. So let's jump in. The first six items, yeah, I'll do them first, are dishcloths. I bought yarn for dishcloths ages ago. I think it was 2023, so at least a year ago. And I bought it because Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady makes dishcloths. And I was like, dishcloths? Sounds like something easy I can do. But it's cotton. And you all know I do not like knitting with cotton. And so I knit one and I put it aside. I actually didn't have the recommended needle size. It says 4.5 and I had, I didn't want to do large circumference needles, but I had some four millimeter, 24 inch needles. And so I, I used these and the gauge was just a bit tight and I didn't really enjoy it. I put it away. Then I started cleaning out my stash, which again, video <laughs> will come. I'm still in the process and you can kind of get a bit of a, a feel for that today. Um, but I wanted to make a scrappy basket 
which I'll talk about here in a sec. And I was like, I have this. In fact, it may even have been this one. This basket was just full to the brim of cotton scraps. And it was, you know, some were four ply, some were eight ply, big enough. Some of them would have been big enough to make clothing for a baby. None of them were big enough to make clothing for an adult or even for my kids who are no longer in the baby stage. And I was just like, I just don't know what I'm going to do with it. And every time I clean out, I just kind of move it from one place to another. And I was like, I just want to get rid of it. But I had the cotton that I bought for dishcloths in the basket because it was all my cotton. And I looked at it and I thought, the one that I made a year ago, I still use. And I love it. And it is so good because it's, you know, got friction and um, like it's good for if something's a little bit, um, what's the word, like dried on or something to get that bit of friction. But it's still soft and it doesn't scratch. And I was like, I really like it. I didn't enjoy knitting it. But I thought, I'm just going to put them all in a bag. Made by me, tutorial linked below. Um, I, yeah, I put it all in a bag and I thought, I'm just going to put it here with the needles. If I get to it, I get to it. And then one day, to be precise, the 17th of September. Oh, today is September 20, 25th, 26th. It's a Friday. I think it's the 26th. No, it's the 27th. I should know that. It's the 27th. Hi, guys. 27th at 1.25 p.m. Um, yeah, I was like, if I get to it, I get to it. On the 17th, I decided I wanted to knit it. I can't remember what was happening, um, but I just needed something simple, and I was getting sick of the bad sitting there. So I picked it up and cast on. And I'm using the patterns in here. It's a free pattern. Um, it is the garter stitch diagonal dishcloth um, with or without holes on the edges. Now, the pattern is linked on my Ravelry page. It's a direct link to the PDF. It says, um, courtesy of the makeyourownzone.com. And I'm doing the one at the bottom, which is the updated diagonal knit dishcloth with no holes. So, patterns on the Ravelry page linked below. And this is what it looks like. I did change the stitch count. So rather than doing knit till 47 stitches, I knit till 49 stitches. Not a huge difference. And each one took about 35 grams um, on four millimeter to do that stitch count. I don't know what it would be on 4.5. Um, so here are the ones that I have done. Now, before I knit the gray, I knit these three and I had leftovers and I had leftovers from these, but also from the first one that I ever knit, which was this green. And so I decided to knit some scrappy ones and I did weigh, I did weigh all of my scraps from all of the colors and I knew, um, sorry, with the gray that I already had and I knew that I had enough to do three dishcloths total from the gray and the scraps of the rest. And so when I knit these, actually that one I didn't need any gray in it. Um, this one I knew I was going to need some gray and so I decided to put it in the middle rather than on the edge. Um, and then I had the boring task of knitting a plain gray one at the end. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun knitting them. I, I really loved how quick they were. Like, there was, let me see. So the first one I started on the 17th, finished on the 18th. The second one started on the 18th, finished on the 20th. The third one I finished, like I knit entirely on the 20th. Oh, wow. So the third one and the fourth one I knit entirely on the 20th. The fifth one I started on the 20th, finished on the 21st. And then the last one I did completely on the 21st. So from the 17th to the 21st of September, I knit six dishcloths and I didn't knit them exclusively. I did other things as well. Um, like I did life things, I knit on other things, but I, I partly wanted to take the yarn out of my stash. I partly um, wanted to just 
have them and use them. And now that I've shown you, I can. Um, and I partly just wanted to get the bag away from where, where it was sitting. But I also just needed some quick wins. You know those days where you just want a quick win? And I knew this would be a quick win. Like I, I need two full ones and two partial ones on the same day. I'm, to be fair, it was the very end of one and the very start of another. So it was two in like a tiny bit. Um, but yeah, they were quick wins and I love them. And like, that's just fun. This is just fun. And I kind of wish I'd done more scrappy with the colors. Like I didn't have to do plain, but I also know I like scrappy when scrappy makes sense. I don't always like breaking into new to make scrappy. Sometimes I do, but I don't always. So anyway, they are all my dishcloths. I'm happy that they're done. I'm happy to use them. I'm happy that that is, um, I mean, it's four colors in a bit. So it's another 200 grams out of my stash and I'm not storing cotton anymore. If I buy cotton for a reason, I'll try and use it for that reason. I still have my cotton linen from the top that I've made the summer visa top the cotton that I bought for a second one of them is still sitting there. Not sure if I'm going to make the same top or a different top. I have ideas. Anyway, the yarn I've used for this is Hobby Rainbow. It is Rainbow 8x8. It's 100% cotton, 50 grams for 75 meters. Um, yeah, it's done. They're done. The second finished object that I don't have here to show you because it is in use, but I will put some photos up here, um, is the scrappy basket. And <laughs> I feel a little bit bad because I didn't show it last week when it was in progress. And now I don't have it to show you because it's in use, um, but you'll see why. So this is the scrappy basket that I made. Um, I started it on the 31st of August and I finished it on the 24th of September. Now this one I started when I was sick, again, kind of wanting to use up the scraps that I had. I had a basket as I said, full of cotton and bits. But I also knew that I had a problem in my house that I wanted addressing. The toy corner. This toy corner is downstairs. Most of the toys are up here and if it's messy, it's fine. But that corner I see every day when I'm cleaning the kitchen, when I'm doing whatever, and the basket that we had for it is not big for the toys that live, are big enough for the toys that live there. And so I was like, if I can make a scrappy basket, I've made them before, I love making them, use up a whole bunch of scraps that I have, and at the same time, get rid of this. Well, it wasn't as quick as I expected because I made it so big. Um, and so I kind of worked on it off and on. Every time I worked on it and I finished up a ball of yarn, I felt so good. Um, but I just, it took a while because I was, doing other things. Um, I did add to the cotton some other yarn that I had that I just wasn't excited to use. Um, I'll show you this out of my, this is the basket that I put everything in. And that's all I have left. Like this basket was overflowing. That's all I have left. I did do it on a tulip, tulip a Timo eight millimeter Don't know if that's going to focus with my face there. There you go. Tulip, eight millimeter hook. Tulip is my favorite flower. And so I love these for that, but it's also a very comfortable hook. And I've used this for so many scrappy blankets and things. And I had a plastic one, don't know which brand, and it broke a nine millimeter one. This one has been totally fine. Um, but yeah, so all I have left is a tiny bit of this. This is four ply galaxy from Bendigo Woolen Mills. I've used it for a sweater for my son and a dress for my daughter. And honestly, I just don't like the sheen. It's also quite loosely spun. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. Um, like it's quite a loose ply. <clears throat> um, it's got a decent drape because it's a loose ply and because it's bamboo. I think it's bamboo merino, not just bamboo wool. I don't have the tag, um, but I'm just, I wasn't a huge fan of it. And I bought it to make a color work jumper for my daughter and for myself. And I knew that I was just never going to use it for that. 
So when I looked at the cotton and the scraps that I had and I realized I wasn't going to have enough to make a basket the size I wanted, I looked at my other yarn and I found this and I had, I think I had two complete balls, which are 200 grams each and a partial one, which was significantly more than that, but like a partial one about that big maybe. And I also had a partial one in pink. I don't know if it was a full one in white or a partial one in white. I'm not sure, but these are all things that I had bought to make these jumpers already used part of for another project and knew I was never going to come back to the jumper for it. So I decided to use them for this because I knew I wanted this in my house. It was going to serve a purpose and I just wasn't excited to knit with this in general. As I did it and I started finishing up things, I realized I was going to need more strands. And so I was pulling these from the inside and the outside. And then as I needed more, I actually wound off little balls, um, like just wound them up on my hand and then held them double. And then at the very end, I couldn't be bothered to break yarn and do it again, but I knew I needed another two strands. And so what I actually did was I just kind of pulled, cause this is attached up here, right? And so I just kind of pulled out and joined that in and knit until it finished and then did it again. Kind of like chain plying if you, or a spinner, um, but because it's cotton, cotton, because it's crochet, it's really easy to just hide those ends. And so I just did that to the very end. Um, like I think I had six of these small balls on the go, as well as these two at the end. Um, and then as they started finishing, I just, yeah, pulled extra bits in. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with that. And you can see now, the after picture with the toys all put away. They all fit. Everything from that other picture is now away. And the kids haven't emptied it out to play in it yet, which is honestly quite amazing. My kids love sitting in baskets. In fact, as I was knitting it, my son came up and said, Mom, can I sit in that? <laughs> and I was like, no, it's for your toys. Please, please. Um, so I'm sure that'll happen sometime. But at the moment, it's full of toys. They're using the toys and they're not tipping them on the ground. So calling it a win. Mm. And wins in other ways, like it's finished. It gave me a relatively quick project for what it was. All of that cotton and the wool that I'm not wanting to knit with is gone from my stash. This I'm actually going to because it's four ply, not sock wool. I'm just going to add it into my bits and bobs basket, which is all of my kind of four ply, not sock scraps. And it can go there. Um, but also it used 1,761 grams. Like, oh, so good. I am not doing an OBI. I'm not doing a more out than in or anything like that, but I am tracking what I'm using. And I'm trying hard to not make decisions on what I want to knit or crochet based on what the numbers are doing. Like I'm trying to track, I'm not trying to achieve a goal, if that makes sense. And so I don't want to, I don't want to buy a huge amount and have it sit there forever. But I also don't want to be like, I need to knit this project because it's quick and it will use a lot of yarn because that's not like, I, I enjoy that. And sometimes I want that, but I also want to do the slow projects and not feel like I'm letting myself down by knitting a, a long, slow, intense project. So I'm not like trying to reach a goal with this, but also it felt really good that I have been storing that much yarn that I was not excited to knit with, did not know what to do with. And now I have transformed this like almost two kilos of whatever into something that is beautiful and sits in my home and brings me ha joy and fills a need. So good. And there is a little added bonus of when I do my steps this month, it's going to look really good. Anyway, so that, that's that. Um, all right. And so, yeah, that was almost a month in the making, but really good when I got it finished. Um, just, Oh, I haven't even finished finished objects yet. Gosh. All right. Next, I finished a tiny baby pair of socks. My daughter is three. And so these socks are for her. Um, they are knit in the pink is, I mean, 
technically by this point they're all scraps, but the pink is Daffodil Road Yarn um, Strawberry Whip, excuse me, and the Pastel Rainbow is from Dying Dream. Now, last episode I told you I was kind of over this yarn, and I think it was just that I've been working with it so much. Like, looking at them, they're so cute, um, and they are all very soft, but let me just show you, like, one, two, three. Yeah, so I have three pairs of socks from this yarn. Um, and like the other two, the bigger ones, I finished before the last podcast. But I kept them so I could show you all together. Um, yeah, they're all done. Yay. What can I say about them? Like these ones, I did 48 stitches um, and I still did vanilla socks on Magic Loop according to Kay the Sock Lady, Crazy Sock Lady's instructions. Um, but I did all the counts according to the DK weight vanilla socks. So it's fingering 2.5 millimeter needles, but all of the counts are according to her DK weight vanilla socks pattern, which is a free pattern. So yeah. 48 stitches for tiny baby girl. Um, tiny baby, she's three. My son, um, I did 56 stitches, which is the small on her vanilla socks, not DK weight. And it is a little bit roomy. So I think next time I'd probably do 52 stitches for him and stick with the 48 for my daughter at the moment. I put these away where I kind of keep all my yarn. Um, like in the in the common room, not the the craft hole, um, but in the in the lounge room. And then I was doing something outside, and my daughter was wearing one of these socks and splashing in water and playing in water. And I was like, "What are you doing? Like, I I put that away. Why are you wearing them?" And she's like, "Oh, I found them." And I was like, "Well, they are for you, but I haven't given them to you yet." And so I went and um, went to like take it, wring it out find the other one and the other one was missing too and I was like what's going on and my husband's like oh it's under the table he hadn't realized that she wasn't meant to use them yet anyway so one was sopping wet and I just like wrung it out by hand lay it to flat dry, dry flat and I am gonna say it was this one because the heel is looking slightly more worn like as in she wore them for a bit and wet them and yeah um but yeah they're great. She loves them. And now I can give them to her and my son. And the mystery ones can go away for the person that they're for. Oh, and those ones I started on September 11, my sister's birthday. Happy birthday, Mel. And finished them on the 15th of September. Um, yeah, so it was pretty quick and... Cool. The, the last thing that I finished, is that right? Yep. The last thing that I finished was, I did a muscle bar hat. This is for my son. Uh, when I went to a yarn show in Australia, I was trying to buy very specifically for projects and I bought some yarn to make my daughter a muscle bar and some yarn to make my son a muscle bar. Um, it's a pattern by Isolde Teague, and this yarn is Maximu Yarns Pot of Gold. I love the name as well. My son loves rainbows. He just, all the colours. When I say, what's your favourite colour, he says rainbow, because he loves all the colours. And so I saw this, and I thought, that's really fun. And seeing it in socks, because someone had, like, socks on the needles and was using it at the stall, um, like the the colours kind of were going up in like spirals, I think. And so you kind of had very distinct colours. Didn't happen so much as a hat, but I just, I love it. Um, so this is, I think, the paler side. And if I flip it over, the other side just got a bit more, more of the speckles and you can kind of see like an orange, red, green, blue um, tendency, but yeah, I love it. And I did 
I did make a mistake. So I made the adult medium because we all have big heads. Um, and the last one I made him, I thought was an adult small slash child. And it was just a little small, yeah, um, for him. And so I wanted him to have some room and for it to grow. So I did the adult medium. He hasn't tried it on yet, but I think it'll be okay. But I did make a mistake for the decreases for the first part. I did them two stitches from the marker instead of one stitch from the marker. Um, it's a paid for pattern. Don't want to give much away. But I did do it wrong and I did not change it. And so I don't know if you're going to be able to see that there. But like there's just like there's the beautiful lines here. And then down here, you can see there's a difference. Um, I didn't change it. I wasn't going to rip back for that. Um, and I was like, that can just be the inside of the hat and it doesn't matter. Um, I don't know what he's going to do, which way he's going to wear it, but that's done. I started this on the 15th of September and finished on the 24th of September. So nine, 10 days from like in its entirety. Um, and look, there's been lots of simple knitting going on here. There's been some stuff going on that has been, um, has thrown me for a loop, let's say. Not with me, not with my family, but with a friend's family. And I've just needed a lot of processing time. And so this vanilla knitting has been brilliant. Um, but also I've had some meetings and I've had a few other things that have just been really um, long. <laughs> and so I found, like, I found it really helpful to have something plain, like, a muscle bar is as plain as you can get for a long period. Like toe, um, toes, socks, you still have the heel. And so you have like even vanilla socks, you have a fair bit of plain, but you also have bits and pieces that you need to do stuff. I found, you know, for church and listening, um, having the muscle bar going is just being really brilliant and for meetings and other things. So I've decided for the foreseeable future, I'll probably have a muscle bar on the needles just because I find it useful. And I did, when I finished that, it was, <laughs> I was going to say it was a few days before I cast on a new one. I cast on a new one the same day, but I hadn't finished the increases the same day. And the next day I was doing something and I was like, I need just the plain knitting and I don't have anything. So I think I, oh, no, see, this is where I get caught because I only have one three millimeter, I think one three millimeter chow goo long. I definitely only have one three millimeter um, 16 inch, which is what I knit them on for the body. But then I need the 32 inch or the 40 inch for the, I prefer 32, for the increases and decreases. And I think I only have one of them as well. And so I actually need to finish the decreases on a hat before I can cast on the next one. I can't have like, I'm almost at the end, I'll knit through the increases and put it onto the needle and then go back to the other one. It doesn't work. So I could either get another three millimeter, 16 inch needle, or I can just plan my time, which is what I'll probably do because I have a lot of needles. I haven't quite figured this out yet. I know I've mentioned before about sewing myself uh, a case, like an accordion case to keep my needles in. But I've actually almost convinced myself not to because, sorry about the table, I love having them in these bags, in these bags, because if I'm doing a project that has like two needles or even three needle sizes sometimes, being able to pull them out and be like, oh, that's exactly the information that I need for whatever it is, it's really, really simple. And so what I'm thinking now, rather than making myself an accordion case and getting rid of all these packaging, is actually just to get a box that's a good size box that I can put them all in and then I can flick and maybe have dividers um, so that I can, you know, be like, these are all my four millimeters. Where's the size that I want? I think that's what I'm going to do. Because taking them out of these and then having loose needles in here or having to have separate things, yeah, I was like, hmm. nope, too much effort. So just a bit of an update on that. I'm not going to make an accordion case for my circulars. Okay. Look, we're quite a ways through this and I've just 
finish telling you about my finished objects. It's been that kind of time. Um, all right, so I have been working on things. After all of those, I have only got five whips. And one of them I don't even have here to show you because I haven't really touched it. I've done, maybe I've done two rows. Like I really haven't touched it. So my butterfly shawl is sitting downstairs and I will show you that when I've worked on it. But let's jump into what I have been working on. So, um, I, like I said, I've been really enjoying having my hands in different pies, shall we say, um, for what I feel like working on. And I have, oh, I actually have six things on the needles, five to show you, one which I will probably change. Um, anyway, so one of the things that I have been working on is my framed sweater. Um, this one is actually so close. I just need to do the three needle bind off and the, the body will be done. I, I almost did it before I came up, but I knew that I was going to be short on time again because it is again a school day and I need to go pick up my son soon. So this is my framed sweater by Andrea Mary. Um, I, I love it. I love it. It is so, I mean, it's squishy. It's warm there. I'm just trying to think, did I tell you about all the yarn for the other things that I've made? I think so. Um, the yarn, so the contrast color here and the blue down here is Malabrigo Rios in, I think it's Chapo do Terra. Where is the tag? That one will do. Cello e tiara. There you go. That's why I check because I'm wrong. 894. Um, and it is, yeah, Malabrigo Rios. Rios, which is worsted weight, not 192 meters per 100 grams, 100% 100 superwash merino wool. Um, and it is no dye lot. Yeah, number 894. The, the brown up here and the blue here are actually the same colorway. They're just, like you can see, there is much more brown here and much more blue down there. Um, same colorway. There's, n sorry, I don't know, I don't know whether I put it in front of my face, you can hear me as clearly. The brown and the blue are the same colorway. Um, it just was, yeah, it came out very different. And I knew when I bought the yarn, I had two of the blue and one of the brown. I knew they were different and I was gonna strike it to make it work so it was all the same color. And then when I got found this project, I was like, that would be perfect. I need three skeins and one has to be different. I was like, let's just let it do its thing. And so this is just the more brown skein. And then this is, um, this is all the same skein on the front. And then on the back, uh, where did it change? Yeah, down here. So like halfway through this star it changed. Um, and I'm not like, I, I couldn't see it. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, yeah. And then the gray is hand spun. It's hundred percent Corydale that I bought as a 200 gram bat from Fiber Art Shed, who will also be linked below. Um, and yeah, I just spun it, um, supported long draw. It was very much um, like I spun half of it, um, or a quarter of it a year ago. And then I finished it like a few months ago. So it was like very, very early on in my spinning to not quite so early, but very early on in my long draw. Um, and it is beautifully, beautifully inconsistent. So have a look. Like you can see some much thinner and some much thicker. Um, yeah, I love it. I love knitting with hand spun. Um, yeah, so this is Andrea Mary's framed sweater. It is a, a boat neck. And I think all I've got to do, turn it back around again. Um, I've just got to do a three needle bind off on the top 
pick up sleeves and knit the sleeves. Um, I did a couple of mods. I didn't gauge swatch for it. Um, and so I think it'll be bigger. I'm doing size two, but I think it'll end up with dimensions closer to size three. Um, and I took off one of the, one of the blocks, one of the, it's a half pattern repeat because a pattern repeat is two blocks. So I took off a half pattern repeat. Um, I did that because I wasn't sure how I was going to go for yarn. I think I'm going to have plenty of yarn, which is great. Um, but I wasn't sure how I was going to do and I knew like that sitting around my waist there. I don't know how much it's going to grow, but I knew that I didn't want it really long. I wanted a cropped one. And so I was happy to make that adjustment. Um, I did buy some needles to do the sleeve so that I can do it continuous color work. So I bought some nine inch needles maybe 9 inch and 12 inch, if I remember correctly, needles to do the sleeves, 12 for the colour work and then 9 for the cuff. Um, yeah, just because I didn't want to do colour work magic loop. I do not like doing colour work magic loop. And yeah, so this is so close to being done. I had a loose plan of having it done for my birthday, which is in two days' time. That's not going to happen. I, yeah. But that's fine. I'm not. I'm unlikely to wear it on my birthday. It has been warm here. Um, like at the moment, it's 23 degrees, um, which you know is not sunbathing weather necessarily, but it's also not very warm, worsted weight, color work sweater weather. Um, but I am, yeah, I'm enjoying making it. I am going to enjoy wearing it when it's done, and I think. This is, shows how much I've done. I think Andrew Mary is doing a knit along. No, she is doing a knit along because it's her Rhinebeck sweater. And I think it finishes in October. But I don't know when in October. So I think maybe I'll put that as my like loose deadline. I think it's maybe the second week in October. Whenever Rhinebeck is, that's the deadline. Um, and see if I can get it finished for that and enter into the prizes because why not? But definitely enjoying it. And like I said... I am not worried about yarn at the moment. So this is the gray. I haven't even gone into the second one. And this is where I thought I was going to be struggling for yardage. And so part of me is wondering if I just counted yardage wrong. Like that's possible. It's hand spun. Maybe I multiplied it by 1.5 when it should have been by 2 or something like that. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I had, had an old moment, but I don't think so. Um, whatever it is, I've got plenty. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, anyway, and I've only just started my second one of this, which I also thought was going to be tight. This is looking the tightest, but I've only got two cuffs to go for this. So that's also fine. So I just, I don't think there'll be a problem in terms of yardage like I think I'll be fine and I if I have lots of this left over I'm excited because I love knitting with this and I it means I have all these other options of what I can do um I will say these skeins were not equal one was 90 and one was 110 and it's the 110 that I still have more of so it's not like I've like I may have used almost half at this point but yeah going well um, the next one that I cast on, so I started that August 8th, so we're, I don't know, six weeks in, that's pretty good. Worsted weight definitely helps. The next ones that I cast on, kind of sat for a while without being touched. I started these on the 14th of September because I finished, I finished these baby socks. So I was like, I need socks. Let's start socks. But I knew that I wanted to do a pattern for these ones. So let's start with the yarn. The yarn that I'm using is Obsession Yarns. Oh, got the stuff on the floor. And this is her Enchanted Colorway on Base B, which is an 8020 Merino Nylon. Um, she lives and dies, lives and dies. 
dyes yarn. She lives and dyes yarn <laughs> in Canberra, Australia. So local to where I was, I picked up this yarn at a, a yarn show down there. The same one that I bought this actually. Um, this is her colorway called Enchanted. It is beautiful. And it was actually, I'm pretty sure it was this one, was her Sock Week colorway last year, maybe two years ago. Um, she was one of the dyers for Nitty Natty's Sock Week. And I'm pretty sure this was her color. And so it's in her regular colorways now. I bought this at a yarn show. I was so happy. It is beautiful. And I bought it to make socks for someone. Again, I'm not going to say who because I don't know if they watch it. Um, but to make socks. And this pattern, I'll flip it over so you can see it up the way it's meant to go. This pattern is called Mermaid Avenue. And it is by Summerlee Knits. And I just... I love it. It's beautiful. It's it's squishy. It's pretty easy to do. Like I don't need to look at the pattern, but I have made a couple of mistakes. Um so it's a six it's a twelve row repeat for the pattern, but each part is six rows. It just offsets. So you can do six rows, offset it, six rows, offset it. So it's pretty easy to do, very easy to remember. It took me a little bit to learn how to read it. So there was one time that I need an extra plain row between the, so it's plain pattern, plain pattern, plain pattern. Um, and so every other row is just straight knitting, my kind of pattern. Um, but I need an extra plain row. And so one of these things was elongated and I was like, oh, I don't like it. So I picked up stitches and I ripped back and it was fine. But then I did it again another time except I skipped the plain row and it meant that like these um so when you're knitting it you're knitting it this way obviously and so these lines go up quite a way but it meant that they were more flat and so it kind of looked like I was just had a row on the outside like it wasn't making that beautiful pattern it was just like I'd caught a row somewhere and I was like you know what it's like three pattern repeats back. I'm not going to do it. Whoever it's for is not going to care. If they do care, like, come on. And I kept knitting and I, I just couldn't. I got up to the heel, which was, you know, two rows away. And I just, I, I couldn't. Every time I looked at the sock, this line just kind of on both sides, it just stuck out. And finally I was like, you know what? I'm not going to enjoy finishing the rest of the sock unless I fix that. So I fixed it. I picked up, I ended up having to pick up um, all right, again. So it was this bit here that was wrong, like I'd missed a row before this larger stitch, but I had to pick back up back at this larger stitch and do the whole pattern repeat again because it's just hard to pick up the stitches in the middle. I could have ripped back and then put them back on the needle, but I much prefer to pick up the stitches before I take the needles out or before I rip back so that I, I'm not in danger of dropping stitches. Um, yeah, so it meant that I had to rip back kind of a full pattern repeat of what was correct to try and fix the part that was, wasn't correct. Um, but I'm really glad I did it. I knit another pattern repeat. I was like, all right, that's enough for today. So I've put it away. Um, like that was today. So I put it away. Um, but yeah, I, I love it. I love the way that it's working up. I love the look of it, the texture. It is so squishy. Um, these are for a gift, but I'll probably knit the pattern again. Um, yeah, just so, so pretty. And this yarn, like it is delightfully soft and squishy and the colors are beautiful. Um, I think this is my first time using Obsession Yarns. Oh, so pretty. Um, yeah. So there you go. That's that sock. It is the first one. I'm knitting it on 2.5 millimeter needles. I don't know what she actually tells you to use in the pattern. Um, Summerly Knits. But I'm doing 2.5 because that is what I do for almost everything. And I will tell you the exceptions in a minute. Um... All right, enter exception. The next one that I am making 
is in a big basket. Now, would you believe me if I told you that this was socks? Because this is for socks. For one pair of socks. No, it's not quite true. I'll probably make more than one pair of this. These are another paper pattern. So let me find you a page that I can show you. These are Stardew Valley socks based on the game, inspired by the game. Um, and it is called Spring. Um, it has a parenthesis on that, which I'm not going to remember. The Valley Comes Alive. Um, if you've Played the game Strategy Valley, you'll just understand completely how brilliant this pattern is. Um, I love it. So, during lockdown, I played a lot of Strategy Valley. I had, um, you can play up to four player multiplayer, at least that's what the limit was at that point. And every Tuesday night, we had a Strategy Valley game. And it was really fun. And so when I saw these, my first thought was, I'm going to make them for everyone who did it with me. And then I was like, I'm not making four pairs of the same sock. To be honest, I probably could. It's fun. But that was my thought. I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Now, I really should get some stitch stoppers for these. But this is what I've done so far. I have a little B stitch marker, which, you know, another Stardew Valley thing. But... I've just started the clouds down here. Um, I'm using a mix of what I had in stash and scraps and stuff that I've bought new because I just didn't have all of the colors that were plain. Um, and then I've started the second cuff as well. Now these ones are colorwork socks. I'm doing size large. I'm following the pattern exactly. And she has you do the cuffs on 2.25 millimeter and then 2.5 for the legs. So that's what I'm doing. Um, but I did get some 2.5 millimeter Chowgoo 9 inch needles because I only had 2.25, which is what I do for the vanilla socks. Um, but I wanted to follow her thing exactly. And she was saying to do, I assume it's a she, maybe not. Um, they were saying to do a, I'm intrigued. Who did design it now? I've just focused on the pattern, not actually the designer. So let me tell you the designer's name. Where are we? Um, bye. Oh, Oakwood Knits. There you go. Oakwood Knits. Um, yes. So I'm following the pattern exactly. Uh, the Colours originally done in Knit Picks palette, which is not a sock yarn. It's fingering weight with no nylon. And it has at the back of the pattern, um, if you want to do Knit Picks stroll fingering, which is a sock yarn with nylon, how to sub the colours out. I can't access any of them where I live without paying enormous shipping and tax. So I have bought wool to finish it up. And I have used a mix of Drops Fable. Performance Cool Ball and Rosaria's Maya. Don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, I will say, out of all of these, this one, which I've never used before, is delightfully soft. It is a 70% wool, 30% polyamide, and it's 185 meters to 50 grams. So I'm kind of wondering if it's heavy fingering, close run sports weight. But it is delightful to touch. This one, it's called Cool Wool and it kind of feels a little bit mm, not beautiful to touch. Like a little bit tougher um, and drops fable. Like it's a little bit, let's see, it's not a merino, is it? Where is it? Yeah, so it's wool. It's not merino. So it's not as soft as a merino, but it is still decently soft i'd say out of them i like the feel of this one best than this one this is my least favorite but it just had some of the colors that i needed and this one feels softer so i don't know anyway and then i've also got in here like i've got some hand dyed um i've got some oh i'm getting stuck some advent scraps from last year um because we did tonals not tonals 
Some of them were tonals. We did a gradient last year. Sorry, some of them were tonals. Um, and I've got scraps from other projects. So it's all kind of just in this basket that I made. I'm trying to think of the name of the pattern. So Traveller, maybe? So Traveller, if I can find the pattern, I will link it below. But I made, it's a free pattern. I made the basket. Um, and it does have, oh, here we go. Maybe? It has a divider in the middle with a zip and it has pockets on the inside and outside. Anyway, I really love the basket. I made it, or the bag. I made it. It is full of yarn. I'm making socks. All the different levels. Um, it, yeah, it's so far very easy to follow. I'm not going to show you the chart because it's a colour work pattern, but it is a coloured chart. I did print the pattern in its entirety in colour, which I don't normally do, but for so much colour work, so much intense, where the colour actually makes a big difference to the overall pattern, I did it. All right, and I started that on the 22nd. So not too long ago, um, I bought the wool the day before the wool was meant to arrive. I cast on the sock so that I could start it pretty quickly because I was waiting. This is attached, but I was waiting on the blue. The, the mid blue so I knew that I could do a little bit like I could do the cuff but I really had to wait for the yarn to arrive so I knit the first cuff when the yarn arrived I knit until the dark blue was finished on the first sock and then I cast on the second cuff so that they're both at the color work stage and my plan is we'll see how this goes but my plan is to knit one sock finish a certain color do the second sock until the previous color is done so that I can always have the colors going straight from one sock to the next because I am doing it scrappy and I just don't know if I'm going to run out of color or if I'm going to like use a color and then not be sure which one I'm I used because it's not like I have 50 grams of every color so I'm going to do it that way and we'll see how it goes but so far I think it's going to work because yeah I'm just using it in one doing it in the other yeah um, but because it's colour work, um, there were times, like I, I worked on that, I enjoyed it. Um, but there were times where I was like, I want to do colour work, but I'm going to do my framed sweater first because I'm so close to finishing that. But there are other times I'm like, I just don't feel like doing such, like, such long repeats or doing such big knitting and I can do my small colour work. And yeah, like I said, I'm enjoying having so many projects. Um, oh, this is getting hot. So I'm just going to take that off for a second. Cool. Um, I am wearing, like this is cotton, so it's not as hot, but layering is. Whew. All right. My second last project that I have been working on. Um, this one makes me so happy. Let me take that one out. I have two in the same bag for this because this has been my, my vanilla knitting bag. This one I did not make. It was a gift from a yarn swap that I did. Um, and I have leftovers from the rainbow socks and the muscle burrow because I just haven't cleaned out the, the bag. In fact, here, I even have the yarn tag for the muscle burrow. So it's maximum yarn. Yeah, there we go. Maximum yarns, pot of gold, luxury sock, 85.15. Um, anyway, so this next one is my next muscle burrow. Now the yarn. Oh, I love this yarn. This yarn is hand spun by me. It was 100% merino wool dyed by Felting U, Felting E-W-E. I bought it on Etsy. Um, really good price. For 100 grams of hand dyed yarn, it was 12 Australian dollars. Like... I, yeah, so cheap. So I don't know how she does it that cheap. Um, she's a, a dyer in South Australia, and so I've bought quite a bit. It's great. I think she she aims it at felters, but it's totally okay to spin with. I've spun quite a few of her colorways and never had a problem. Um, 
But yeah, this one, I was expecting it to have some lighter pink in it. And there are a few light pink moments, but for the most part, it's pretty blue and purple. So it wasn't quite matching what the picture was on Etsy for this. It's called Twinkle. Um, like you can see some very small light pink moments. Um, but I do love it. So this is my muscle borrow. This one I started on the 24th of September, so that was three days ago. Um, and was it yesterday? Yeah, I'd only really just finished the increases. And then, yeah, I had a lot of vanilla knitting time yesterday with meetings and things. So you can see I did it a three-ply fractal. Um, and so you can see kind of the colour changing in here. It... It's definitely blue and purple, but it didn't have a huge amount of variation of colour. Um, and they were quite short bits. So even the one that was kind of one complete one. I'm not explain this well again. Um, even the one that was spun end to end. So for a fractal, I split it into three. The first third, I spun end to end. The second third, I split into two and went A, B, A, B. And the third one I split into four and did A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. So just end to end each time in the same direction. And so the first one, which was a third of the whole thing, because they were quite small color changes, it still had quite a quick turnaround, quite a quick color change. And so you're seeing that in here, that it's still, it's not like one long gradient. You're getting lots of color. Um, Anyway, when I was doing this one, I thought a color changing one would be great. And I had some scraps of uh, Zauber Ball Crazy, which is another slow gradient color change. Um, and I have three different colors of scraps of that from socks that I've made for my dad and my father-in-law. And I thought that would be fun either to do like two lines of each one and have like color changing in two colors at a time or to just do end to end and have just a slow color gradient over all. And then I thought about this yarn and I wasn't sure what to do with it. It is brighter, like it's beautiful. I wasn't sure how it was going to end it up because I knew the color changes were quite quick and that there wasn't actually a huge amount of contrast in it. Um, and so I wasn't sure if I did like a color work top or something, how that was going to work. Um, and then I just got it in my mind that I wanted to do this as a muscle bar. And so I caked it up, cast on the muscle bar, and I love it. And I love it so much that I even considered stopping, frogging it, and using it in a top. But I just, I couldn't even decide what colour I would put it with that I would wear. Like, I could do it with a pink, I could do it with a purple, and maybe that would be fine. But it's just so, like, it's so vibrant, um, so deep, those colours, that... I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it as a beanie, wear it as a beanie, um, and enjoy knitting with hand spun. I have discovered from knitting this that I can ply less. I don't know if I mentioned that in terms of my other hand spun, but this one definitely, it, it's not rope, but there are times where I'm knitting that it feels a little ropey on my, my fingers. Um, and so, yeah, I think like that's quite a big ply. I can probably ply it less. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. But I can probably ply it less and have quite a beautiful, softer yarn. And if I'm not doing it for socks, that would be fine. But yeah, enjoying this. Um, I did weigh, I think it took around 10 grams to do the increases, or not quite that much. I didn't, I didn't weigh this beforehand. I think I just assumed it was still 100 grams. Um, but yeah, I used about 10 grams. It should be, do I even have it in here? Um, unwashed, it was 405 meters and washed, it was 351 meters. So I'm just going to do it until I've got 10 grams left and then I'm going to do the decreases. And if I don't have enough for a flap, I don't mind. But because it's hand spun, I didn't want to just tuck in some other random yarn. I did want the whole thing to be consistently this. 
Um, so that's my plan for that one. And it's still, I mean, there'll be people there who are like, this is gorgeous. I'm not saying it's not gorgeous. I love head spun. I'm just showing you like, overall it's beautiful. But if you look down here, you can see there are some like quite thin bits. It's a three ply yarn. Um, but there are still some really thin bits. And so, yeah, knit with your hand spun. It's fun. Um, all right. So the last one I started yesterday and I haven't even written it in my book yet because I'm not sure if I'm going to keep going or if I'm going to change it. Um, I was chatting with my sister the other day. Hey, mom. And she has been knitting socks for people for gifts. So like, um, classroom teachers, people from church, whatnot, um, getting Christmas stuff done. And she's like, I just don't think I'm going to have enough time to knit all the socks that I need to knit. And I was like, Hey, do you want me to knit a pair or two? Like I can do that. I love knitting socks and my Christmas knitting is almost finished because I live on the other side of the world and I need to do it early. And she's like, look, if you, if you're willing to, sure. So I went to my stash and she said, use not really bright colors, but paler or darker. And so I found two yarns that I thought fit that bill. Like this is a little bit bright, but it's still on the pale side of bright. It's not in your face kind of colors. And then this is like a, a subtle purpley gray and baby pink with just a few colored speckles in there. Um, both of these I dyed myself. That wasn't the plan. I just don't have, like, I have an entire bag of, like, in-your-face bright sock yarn. And I have a whole bag of, um, like, more subtle colours, but more yarns that I bought to make socks for, like, my dad or my father-in-law or my brother-in-law or whatever. Um, that I, yeah. Yeah. Um, in fact, I could do that one for my... Hmm. Anyway, so I was looking through what I had and I just didn't have many and I found these and I thought that's going to work really well. And then I was like, I want vanilla socks because I have my muscle bar, but I would like a, something that I can keep in my car all the time so that I'm not caught with that knitting because that's happened a couple of times this week and still have something to plain knit at home. And as I've already said, I don't have needles to do too much work. So I wanted some vanilla socks on the needles. And so I decided to start these. Um, so this is obviously the purpley one. And I'm doing it on 2.5 millimeter, nine inch circular. Um, but I just was like, maybe that's a bit boring. Like it, it's pretty yarn. But once I knit the entire sock, it's just going to be very bland. And so I'm thinking I might actually frock this. Start a pattern sock with this when I finish the Enchanted Mermaid Avenue socks and do this one vanilla because this one will just have a lot more interest anyway. That's what I'm thinking. I, I could absolutely finish knitting this as it is. Um, the person that they're for, you know, would be getting a pair of hand knit socks. I don't think they're going to complain about it. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure. I might knit a little bit more and see what I think about the yarn, um, whether, I'm, whether I think there's enough interest as plain socks or whether I want to change it for the brighter one and then do a pattern with this. I did consider doing a pattern already, but I don't like doing pattern on nine inch circular. I'm really fuzzy. I like doing color work on nine inch circular pattern. I prefer magic loop because I have more control over the needles when I do that. And so, and I just, yeah, the ribbing on nine inch circular, I just want to get over. So I didn't want to do like a ribbed pattern or something. So anyway, that's where I'm at. I haven't written in my book. I might try a little bit more today and see where I think it's going. Um, but yeah, I, I like, I do, I do like the yarn. I do like there is some interest there. Um, I don't know. My sister will be watching this. Tell me, Mel, what do you think? Um, yeah, but that's kind of where I'm feeling with these, that I want some kind of pattern, but I don't want to do a pattern on this. So I'll probably just frog the whole thing and recast them on, on my other needles. Um, yeah, so we'll see. 
But yeah, so that's where I'm at. And that's just living in the bag with my muscle bar at the moment because they're my plain knitting. All right. That is all of my whips. Not quite. That is all of my whips that I have brought to show you here today. I definitely <laughs> have one more yarny one. I definitely have more whips. Um, so I will just mention this. Um, Leanne of... Please have your name on one of these things. Leanne of... I'm not going to remember her name. I'll link her below. Um, no, nah, it's gone. Anyway, there is someone on Instagram, has a blog and different things, and every year she runs Whips Be Gone. And it's just like a, a fun thing. She sends out emails to encourage you to finish things. And um, basically the, the hope is that you can do, let me think, what is the time? Uh, basically the hope is that you can do something toward finishing a whip every day. Um, and I thought all of this stuff, does not bother me at all. I love working on these things. I'm working on them. If not every day, I'm doing something most days on something. Um, so I'm not trying to make these disappear. They'll disappear. But I do have a cupboard over there with like 20 different sewing projects that I haven't touched for a while. Um, and some of them are really close to being finished and some of them are not. But I was like, what can I do to get them done? Now, I say this hesitantly because Whips Be Gone, uh, she has some cute little printables. So, like, she has this one for a list of your projects, and then she has different, like, tracking sheets because it's over two months. It's October and November, and so you can kind of fill in something every day depending on what kind of thing you like. Um, embroidery hoops. Um, you can do one every day for the months. I'm going to be doing Stephen West MCAL in October. It starts on the 3rd. And so my plan with that is to just focus on that as much as I can to get that knitting done. Because I don't like spoilers. Um, I'll be on Instagram and stuff less because I don't want to see things. Um, so yeah, I, I always get a little bit hesitant because I know October my making is really focused on the MCAL. And by the time it gets to November, I feel like I've already missed most of it because I've been focusing on the MCL. But what I thought I would do is I would write a list, which I didn't bring here, but I wrote a list um, of different whips that I'm working, or different UFOs, I should say, things I haven't touched for a while that I'm working on, um, that I could do that can kind of fit into spaces in my life. Um, so there's a sewing machine one, there's an embroidery one or a cross stitch one. There's, there is yarny ones because there is a yarny blanket that I haven't done for a while that is in that I'll get to it one day kind of basket. So I'll put that on. Um, there's quilting ones, like hand quilting one. Anyway, so I've made a list. There are five different categories and I've got two projects for each category. I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be. But I thought it would be fun to try and do a little something of each category every day. But I do say try because I also recognize I'm a mum. I have two young kids. Making is not my primary thing that I do. It's just something that I do for fun. And as you've seen here today, there are times where I'm just like, this is, this is what I'm feeling and this is what I'm going to do. And there's the MCO. So all of that together says I'm not going to get everything done every day. But I think I'll write, like I'll put that list somewhere so that as I'm thinking about what I can do, I'll be like, oh, maybe I could do this. Maybe I could do that. Um, like I'll get the sewing machine set up with all of the things that I need for finishing the sewing machine, the quilting on one of the quilts. Um, so I'll have the thread, I'll have the needle and all of that set up with the thing there. So that if I'm up here and I'm like, I've got 20 minutes, I can sit down and do a couple of rows of quilting. 
Um, I will do the same for my hand quilting one in another room, um, have that kind of stuff set up so that if I want to sit down and do some quilting, I can do that. Um, yeah, so I'm not trying to do everything every day, but I, I want to have the things ready to work on if the desire strikes. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm thinking for Whips Be Gone. If you've been here for a while, I probably talked about this last year as well. Um, but um, Devoted Quilter, I think it's a Leanne of Devoted Quilter. Again, I'll link her below. But if you're interested in joining in, um, yeah, click on the link and go sign up on her. I think you sign up on her blog and then she sends out emails. Um, if you have whips that are lying around and you want some motivation to finish them, go do that. I'm only going to put it hand on my list and some of them have quite a bit of work on them. In fact, I think all of them have quite a bit of work on them. So I'm not expecting to have 10 things finished. If I finish something, then I'll move on to the second thing on that list. So like if I finish the first cross stitch, I'll move on to the next embroidery. Or if I finish the hand quilting, I'll move on to the other hand quilting thing. So I've only put two in case I finish one and I'm not at the end and I want to keep going two per category. Um, but I'll only be working on the first one. So I'll have five projects that I'm kind of tossing into this mix. Um, I'll let you know how it goes. Maybe I'll be here and be like, look at this quilt that I finished. And maybe I'll be here and be like, <laughs> haven't done anything. Um, yeah, we'll see. The other thing I wanted to talk about quickly, because I do need to go pick up my son, is birthday cast on. Now this is something that I've heard people doing and I really wanted to do it this year. Don't think I'm gonna. Um, my birthday is going to be a little bit hectic. It is a Sunday. Um, we won't to church like we always do. And um, yeah, we'll have people back. Actually, I think we're planning to go out for lunch and then have people come back over here. Um, just some friends who have kids and so all the kids will play and we'll hang out and then they'll go home and other people will come. It's just gonna be a full day. Uh, so I will absolutely be knitting at different times in that day, but I'm not going to have a big chunk of time to sit down and start a new project. And to be honest, I've started so many projects, so there's nothing that I really want to start right now. There are things I want to start, don't get me wrong, I'm still thinking about that dress, but I just haven't landed on a pattern, I need to do swatching, there's a whole lot of stuff that's not going to happen in the next 24 hours, 36 hours. So that's where I'm at with that one. I'm not disappointed. I love the idea of a birthday cast on, but it really is just the idea of it. Um, yeah, it actually, I don't know if it's ever happened for me <laughs> that I started something on my birthday um, because it's so close to the MCAL and the MCAL is kind of my focus. I kind of wish that he would start it at the end of September, not the beginning of October, so that that could be my birthday cast on. But yeah, that's kind of like my new project. I just want to start it. Um, and so I don't want to start anything big or intricate right before that, because I know that's going to be my focus five days later. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at with that. I'm not going to have a birthday cast on. I'm not, I may swatch for that dress, you never know. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. Yeah. So that's, yeah, no birthday cast on this year, but lots and lots and lots of non-birthday cast ons. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much for joining me. Please comment down below. Tell me what you're working on because I would love to, to hear what you're doing. Honestly, even if you've been folding laundry or cleaning your house and yeah whatever love to hear it i i have been listening and watching things while i've cooked dinner recently as well um yeah thanks for joining me today and i will see you next time bye mm -hmm.